MMA Odds Breaker, I'm Frank Trigg. That, of course, is Eve Edwards getting ready to fight Peter Holloman coming up here on June 7th, UFC Fight Night in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Eve, you, you got up early this morning to go to Miami to pick somebody up from the airport. Yeah. What is and, it, like, you're you're still, you're in training camp. Like, you're in the middle of training, like, didn't that screw up your day for training? Um, It kind of put a little, little damper on the day, but it didn't screw it up. Um. I mean, it's it's one of those things, you know. You kind of work around it. I but I got back early enough. I got back around. I got back to the house about seven fifty. And well, hold on, you're in Fort Lauderdale, and you yeah. drive to Miami Airport to pick somebody up, and you were back at your house at seven fifteen in the morning. Seven five zero. So, but oh, yeah, seven fifty. Okay. But yeah, I left. I I got a text from uh, I was it was Tiago Alves. He went to go visit family in Brazil, and I'm staying at his house, and um. I was like, I mean, it makes no sense for him to try to take a cab all the way from Miami, you know. So, um, but I mean, it, it's cool. I got back. I was able to take a nap and make it to jujitsu practice. So, okay, I'll, I'll take a nap again and then go to practice tonight. It uh, I, the way you were being cryptic about who you're picking up, I thought you had a you know had a friend coming in town. I was like, I'm just gonna leave this one alone. We won't say anything about it. So, <laughs> like, you know, you know. I I don't have those kinds of friends. You I got you had a flight a massage therapist because your glutes are bad. <laughs> Whatever. No, yeah. So no, it's good though. You like so you're staying at Alva's house. He was gone. You just have a key to get in, or how'd you get in when you got there? Um, yeah, I, I basically while he was gone, I was house sitting for him and and watching his dog and and. But I mean, I, I guess it's not. I was I was crashing at his place and end up watch, just watching his dog at the same time. It's, it, it was no big deal. I kind of worked out. I mean, for both of us, he 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 had no concerns about it. He was um. He was playing, planning this trip before his fight, um, and he 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 he's always his always his door is always open, you know, for for me. So I really appreciate that. And then um, he was like, "Yeah, I, he was like, I'm going home for a bit, you know. So how long do you want to stay?" And I was like, "If you don't mind, I I can stay." He's like, "Oh, that'd be perfect, cause then you can watch Tank for me, and I don't have to worry about it." Um, so it all worked out, man. There, uh, is that your ringtone? That was a text. I was getting a text from um for the Uf for, from the UFC actually. That's great. That's the, one of the best ringtones I've heard. Now, is that is that just the UFC's particular ringtone? So you know that's them, or is that everybody's ringtone? That's that's for everybody for for my text messages. But I have certain certain ringtones for certain people. Yeah, yeah. I got. I'm the same way. It's like I want I want to know before I pick up my phone if I actually want to pick it up. So yeah. I have, I have, they have text text sounds and they also have uh, have a ringtone. So. I know if I need to go across the room to go grab my phone or not, if I can just leave it over there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. All right, well, let's talk about Holman. You're uh, getting ready to fight uh, uh, Piotr Holman. Break him down for us as a fighter. I mean, you're obviously at, at 42 and 20 are the, are the super veteran compared to his 14 and 2. I mean, we're right. talking about 42 versus 14 wins. This is, I mean, that's a huge gap. So you've got a lot of experience on him, but it's a great match. You know, so, you know, matchmaking makes makes the makes the deal work out, makes the fights work out. How do you break him down? I'm um, after watching some of his fights. Um, it's obvious the guy's tough. You know what I mean? Um, I think my biggest concern with him is is the fact that uh, he recovers so well so quickly. You know, um, I've seen him get hurt in a couple of fights. His, both of his UFC fights, he got hurt, but um, he was able to grab a hold of the guy for. I mean, 15 seconds and he was, he seemed back to normal, you know? So it's one of those things. If, um, when, when I hurt him, I can't, I can't rush it and I can't let him slow me down. I gotta, I gotta keep him on the outside and keep him taking punishment, whether it's enough punishment to stop him or it's just enough punishment to constantly slow him down. But, um, um, as far as, as far as the, 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 the skill set in his game, um, he's definitely looked stronger on the mat. Um, and but it, he does it, he doesn't pull out anything um, flashy or whatnot. Just solid basics. Looks like he's pretty strong. Um, good conditioning and always in the fight. You know, so um, I I see the things that I think I need to do to to capitalize on on the advantages I have. But I see the things that um that he's going to need to do. So I feel like I see where I need to avoid the areas I need to avoid with him. And um, I feel comfortable going forward. Did you take anything from his fight with Al Quinta? You know, he ended up losing that decision. Uh, but did you take anything? Do you look back at the guy's most recent fight 
and try to pull the most out of it for your for your for your training cycle? Most definitely. Um, but the fight with Ayakunta is the one that um is the one that showed more, you know. Um his fight with, with Trinaldo was a good fight and because Trinaldo is a southpaw, there were some things in there I could look at and, and pick apart. But um at the same time, you know, he fought fifteen minutes with Ayakinta and um, you know, it was a tough fight and in that fight he got hurt and he got hurt in the second. Um and he was able to he was able to come back and recover from it. And then um going into the third, you know, the third was still a fight. I can I feel like Kinta won also that round, but um he made it a fight and it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a walkover at that point, you know. Um he, he was still strong and his wrestling looked good. Um I, I'm looking forward to a good one. Let, let's go back to uh, the fight for just a second. With the judges, the way that the judges are, and, and let's and let's I'm gonna call it for what it is. The refing and judging is subpar right now. There's there's a few refs that are amazing. I can't really pick a judge at any level that I'm like, hey, this is a great judge. I, I want them on my when I'm fighting. Like, there's not that judge out there. There are a lot of refs that I go, hey, look, I want this ref. But there's also a lot of refs. I'm like, if this ref, if that's my my pick, I'm gonna ask for somebody else. Like, I, I legitimately, if I'm cornering somebody, I would ask for a different ref because I have certain issues with certain refs. Yeah. In that fight, he could have won that fight still because it could have split going into the third round. Like, even though he definitely lost the second round because he got dropped, the first round you can kind of argue, eh, maybe, maybe not. Third round, eh, maybe. So it's like when you're fighting him and, and it's getting into that third round, do you now go, hey, the judges could be screwing me? Even though I got two takedowns, I had a submission attempt, I knocked him down once, like even though I know for sure I'm winning this fight, do you still go in the third round now, especially with your knowledge of how many times in your 20 losses that you've been outright screwed? In your loss, like just a complete farce. Like, what the hell are they looking at? Kind of loss. You go in that third round and go, I still got to win this third round. I got to win it. Like, I got to make this a 10 8 round to make sure I win this fight. Do you still, do you have that mindset going into the third? Definitely. Um, after, after, especially recently, after, um, you know, some of my recent fights and some of the ones in the past that I feel like I haven't lost. Um, but, but, and, and seems like, you know, the whole world, but three people feel like I, you know, two to two or three people feel like I did. Um, it's one of those things where I'm not counting rounds anymore. You know, each round is a new round and I want to win every one of them. You know what I mean? Um, the third round, especially when it comes to, to you getting in the third round of a fight with a guy who's tough and a guy that you can't put away. Um, I want, I want to, if I can't put you away, I want to beat you up. For as for the majority of that round, you know, um, if not for fifty minutes, I'm trying to beat you. I'm sorry, for five minutes, I'm trying to beat you up for four minutes and fifty nine seconds. You know, yeah. um, I just, I just, I just got to win it. Uh, I can't, I can't look back and think. I, I, I've had rounds where I, I feel like I dominated and I still, I still lost um, a thirty twenty seven. You know, and it's like there's no way I lost all three of those rounds. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at each round as a separate fight. And I'm trying to win every fight. Does that change how practice is run then? Well, not run, but how you view practice then, knowing that, okay, we have five rounds of sparring and wrestling, six rounds of sparring later on tonight in, in boxing, and then tomorrow is six rounds of, of full MMA sparring. Do you then walk into these rounds and go, i got to win, even in practice, I've got to win this round, and, and, and I've got to make sure that, that this fresh guy came in, coming in on me takes an ass kicking no matter what happens because I have to win this round? Pretty much. I, uh, I'm trying to win every round. The problem... The only problem I have with that, especially down here, is that I'm trying to win every round against guys like Nick Lentz, Will Brooks, Dustin Poirier, Robbie Lawler, you know. So um, I'm trying to win these rounds. But, like, the guys that I'm, I'm training with is, like, it's not going to be easy. But um, that's fine, you know. This is practice, and we're all trying to help each other get better. You know, this is a private room, and what happens in this room is pretty much what stays in this room, you know. Um but that also makes it better for when it's time to go out there and step in the cage. You know, when I get in the octagon, it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the cage uh, because if it's another southpaw, he's not Dustin Poirier or Robbie Lawler, you know? Right. And if, if it's a right-handed cat, he's not Nick Lance, he's not Will Brooks, you know? He's not any of the guys that I train with. Um, and all these guys have, have a pretty varied skill set. Um, they can do everything. So... Uh, I, you know, it's it's the only the only thing different guys bring is you know this guy may be a little more athletic, this guy's a little faster, you know, um, and so I, I feel like I've seen a lot, you know, I've seen a lot, I've seen almost everything, so 
I'm not I'm not gonna worry too much about what what they bring. Um, and and as far as winning those rounds, you know, um, I'm trying to win it with some of the best guys in the world. So, you know, unless you're one of the best guys in the world, I can't be concerned with that. I want to ask you something because you mentioned that, you know, this is a, it's a private practice room. You know, what goes on in practice goes on in practice. And there has been some other camps where guys leave the camp and start talking about the guys in the camp. I beat this guy, I beat that guy. This guy's a baby. That guy's a baby. Even when guys leave ATT, they don't really talk about what happened in the room. Other than it's great training, guys. I'm, I'm, beating, I'm getting beat up by this guy. I'm training with this guy. It's a tough room. You guys kind of don't talk about what goes on in practice at all. Like, you keep it really private down there. Is that something the barrio forces to be like, this is a private room, don't talk about us? You know, you don't talk about Fight Club kind of thing? Or is it something that just mutual respect for Robbie Lawler, for Dustin Poirier, coming, you know, Will Brooks, who just had a great victory, you know, uh, coming up? Like, is it is this something that you guys talk about, or is it something that's just just known? You don't talk about it. I don't know if it's known or or, or not, and it's not something that anybody enforces or, or has to talk about. I think it truly is that we're all friends. You know, mm -hmm. we're all friends off the mat. Um, you know, Pori and I, we 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 hang out. We spend a lot of time together. We play video games together. You know. Yeah, he talked um, a lot. Of, he talked a lot about you in his interview. When I interviewed him in the past, he talks a lot about you, almost almost like a big brother. He talks about you, where he really looks up to and kind of. You, you're a guy that's been here before. He you kind of understand where he's going. He spends a lot of time with you, and to me, that was kind of an odd friendship. Like it just didn't didn't seem to match for me. You know, on the outside looking in. But it's even you're talking about it now. Like it's it's something that you guys just just how you guys became friends, you became friends. But it seems like everybody at ATT is a friend. It doesn't make a difference who it is. I don't care who I talk to. Everybody is friends with everybody else. And it's true, man. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like you say the funny thing about what you say is like, boy, it's like almost like he listens to me like a big brother. But um, it's if he looks up to me like a big brother. I need to try and try and see how I can take advantage of that because it doesn't stop him from trying to kick my ass, you know. Um, <laughs> right, <laughs> um, but right. like, like, we're, like, really, truly, we're all friends. I mean, everybody. Um, Mike, Mike Brown is one of my best friends in the world. You know, we fought before, but we've since when, since we've been training together, we've helped each other out as much as possible. Um, and, and I think that's the big thing about what's here. You know, George Masvidal, another guy. You know. Um, we're we're pretty close. We're 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 all good friends. We we cut for each other, and 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 I don't think I don't think if if you know if the wire was thin, if uh, if one guy was needed, any one of those guys will step up for him or, or have their back in any situation, not just you know a training situation, a fight situation. I'm talking about in the middle of the night, and you got a flat tire, you know. Um, you, I feel like I can call one of those guys. I can call Dustin. I can call Mike, you know, um, and they, they'll help me out. Um, that kind of thing. So it's, it's one of those things, um, where, where it doesn't leave the room because the friendship is real. You know, yeah. um, these guys like Masvidal and I, we, Masvidal and I, Mike and I, we fought and we will probably never, ever fight again unless, unless it's a belt on the line. And it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, um, screw the fuck that guy. I don't want. I don't want anything to do with him. Or I'm not gonna. Tra I'm not even not gonna train with him. You know, we'll probably train the same building and just not train with each other. You know, right. we could probably possibly still train with each other for that. And you know, it it won't mean a thing. It's just um, is because we're all shooting for the same goal. And and at that point, it would be that's the one thing that we both have a chance to get. You know, but other than that, it would never happen. And um. We we've all got each other's back, and even in that scenario, we we still have each other's back. And it's interesting because a lot of a you know there's a lot of camp switching, and everyone looking for the better and trying to cut through each other. But it, it just doesn't seem like that now with uh, with ATT. It just kind of seems like everyone's once you once you're in part of the group, you're just part of that group, and you're always going to be part of that group. So it kind of works out. Yeah, definitely. I, I think we got a family atmosphere. Um, we do a lot of things together outside of outside of the gym too. Every so often, you know, um, a lot of us get together once or twice a week and just hang out and do stuff, you know, whether, um, and, and we have, diff not, we don't necessarily even have different groups, you know, but I mean, we have different if activities that we do together and yeah. different guys from different activities do different things every week, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's yeah. Just like things you're, you're a gamer. So you and Dustin play a lot. You game a lot. You know, I'm not, I'm not that much of a gamer. So if I'm part of ATT, I'd be out fishing or, or at the beach or hang, so it'd be a different group that does that group. And it's just, 
that's how the changes go. It's like being, uh, it's like having, um, uh, uh, like a hundred brothers and sisters, not, not all of the exact same thing. You always do different things with different brothers and sisters. Just how it works. Yeah, so. exactly how it works down here. Well, Eves, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I know you, you got it's nap time for you again. I appreciate coming on here with us, Emory Oddsbreaker. And, and as always, I apologize. I always end up talking to you longer than, than I tell you I'm going to. So uh, I want to apologize for keeping you longer than I, than I was supposed to. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's always a good conversation. Thanks a lot, Frank. You got it, bud. Have fun down there. Um, home is going to be a really good fight, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really, really interesting fight to watch from TV. Uh, unfortunately, I won't make it down to New Mexico for this one, but uh, if plans change, I definitely would love to see this one live because I think this one's going to be one, one of the fights – uh, of the night uh, on this entire card. So have fun with it Thanks. and then talk to you soon, bud. Appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully we talk again. Very soon. We will for sure. Trust, believe that. Thanks, Frank. You take care, brother. You too, bud. All right. Thanks.